These are not mine, by the way. Not mine. So hey guys, and welcome back. Today, we are going over someone else's camera collection uh, that I am helping them sell. So uh, there is a lot up here, as I'm sure you could probably uh, see. Just bring that up just a touch more. Um, so a buddy of mine is moving back over to Europe and shipping things is expensive. And obviously you can't take all this on a flight. So I'm helping him consolidate his collection uh, by helping him sell some of this stuff here in the States to help pay for his travel expenses and stuff while he's over there. And then some of the stuff, it's honestly gonna be cheaper to just sell what he has here and then buy it again over there uh, than to try and transport it all. And it's just a mess. Plus he's been wanting to consolidate for a while stuff that he doesn't use and kind of figuring out what he wants to keep. So it's good for me because I'm going to be in the same boat pretty soon. But so I thought it'd be interesting to kind of go over what he has shot and decided not to keep. And then of course go over what he has and he's going to keep and ship over there to Europe with him. I have a list of what he's decided to keep and of course everything here he is selling. So if you're interested in anything specific, uh, be sure to send me an email or shoot me a direct message on Instagram and I can kind of go over the pricing with you. Otherwise, eventually this will all be up on my website uh, to kind of sell for him. So yeah, if you're interested, let me know because I'm sure some of this will probably go fairly quickly. Everything works, everything's in great condition. Also, make sure you stick around till the end. I have two giveaway winners I will be announcing, so make sure you stick around for that. So I'm gonna start on this end, kind of work my way over. I'll start with 35 mil, go up to the medium format, uh, start with the more common ones and kind of work into that thing is still high, but I want to be able to see it all on camera, you know? All right, so let's see, where am I at as far as, I want to be right about there, which is perfect. Okay, cool, awesome. So first off, we're going to start with one of my personal favorites, an Icon F, one of my all-time favorite cameras. I always love shooting the F and the F2. Uh, downsides to the F and F2, Nikon F and Nikon F2, not Nikon F1. I always get that mixed up because the Canon F1 throws me off, even though I don't there's no Canon F2, but whatever. Nikon F, great camera. It is big, bulky, and heavy. So I can understand why he's decided not to keep this one uh, and to kind of put it up for sale. He can always get one over in Europe. There's still only about 120 to 175, 200, depending you know, on various circumstances. Next up, uh, let's stay with the Nikon line first. Other Nikons, we have over here the Nikon FM with the 50 mil 1.4 lens. There is the FM, there's also the FE. Now we have the FE and the FE2 over here. So I'm losing stuff all right here. Here's the Nikon FE2. Uh, and then right behind it, we have the FE with the MD12 motor drive. Great camera. Uh, the main difference between the FE and the FM is that one shoots fully mechanical and then one does require a battery. There's a few other minor little differences, but that's kind of the main ish difference between the two. These are much lighter, of course, than the F1 and F2s. They give you more functions, uh, but they do require batteries for those extra functions and things like that. But they're great cameras. I've taken them on trips with me before. Um, fantastic lighter build, lightweight, and still shoots all the same great Nikon glass. One more Nikon, the Nikkor mat. There's the Nikko mat, which is the Japanese version, and then there's the Nikkor mat. These are great. I mean, I'm a big fan of these. Uh, I still have a few that I occasionally do shoot as well. Really, the only difference between this and the F1s and F2s is that with this, you don't get a removable prism. Uh, and of course, the shutter speed is up here on the lens instead of over up on the top like most cameras. But that keeps the top of the profile a little bit slimmer. And then I kind of always have preferred to have my shutter speed up here. It just makes sense to me because I go from shutter speed, then straight up to the aperture, which is right in front of it, and then I'm good to go. So I've always loved that. I wish more cameras did that. Moving along, we have the Pentax Spotmatic. We have two Pentax Spotmatics, uh, both in great working condition. You guys know I've done several videos on the Spotmatic line and the Takumar glass, which I really love to go shoot with. Uh, the Takumar glass is some of my favorite. I really like shooting with that. It's great for travel. It's compact. It's got a nice clean look to it. So it's easy to switch it from shooting film over to shooting on my digital camera. And I still know I'm gonna get a crisp, clean, good look no matter what I'm shooting with. And it's great for video as well. The other Spotmatic over here, we have a 28mm 3.5 lens. 
I may have to keep that lens. Now, moving on to the Canon side of things. First of all, rangefinder wise, we have the Canon 2B. Yeah, Canon 2B, which is a nice little rangefinder, kind of like a Leica copy. Um, I believe it's M42, it might be M39. Not quite sure, I've never shot with one of these. Don't know much about it. It is a cool, nifty looking little rangefinder though. So you're gonna have a lot of glass options. It's got the old school film advance there, which is not a lever, but just a wind crank there. A nice tiny little viewfinder that I'm sure everybody loves for uh, those old school rangefinders. Focus patch, not bad, despite being rather small. <clears throat> uh, but these are cool. I would definitely be interested to shoot one of these and kind of see how they work. As far as shutter goes, a little louder on the shutter uh, than I would expect for this, but still, it's, man, that's smooth. That's butter. Uh, so yeah, this is in fantastic condition. Next, one of the classics, we have the Canon A1. Love the Canon A1. I've done a review on this between the Canon A1, AE1, and AE1 program. Personally, I prefer the A1, you get more features. It's a little bit more intricate as far as using, switching between you know shutter priority, aperture priority, and fully manual. It can be a little confusing at first, and the dials aren't as quick and easy to maneuver, but I am a big fan of the A1 out of those three. This comes with the 50mm 1.4 lens and the Soligar battery grip on there too, which works. We have another well-known option, which is the Canon AE1 program. This also comes with a battery grip, the Canon winder grip there, uh, and then a 28 mil, I believe. Yeah, 28 mil 2.8 lens. Another great option, solid beginner camera, solid camera for anybody really, because it's just so easy and simple to use. Behind that, we have the Canon new F1. This is a monstrosity of a camera. It's heavy, it's got the battery grip on there, I love the matte black they decided to put on these. I mean, I have the old F1 and it's cool. It's got the lower profile um, prism on it though. And it's not matte black, so it's kind of a bummer. But the F1, new F1s, they're great. Just a staple camera. One of the best cameras you can get in the Canon lineup is the Canon F1. All around solid with that removable prism. Very similar to, you know, the Nikon F2s and the Nikon F3s. Next is one I have know nothing about. Uh, this is a little bit more modern. This is the Canon EOS 1V. Uh, this is similar, I would think, to, what is it, the, the monstrosity that Canon has, a 5D, 1DX, yeah, the Canon 1DX and the Canon 1DX2. Just a beast of a camera. Uh, it comes with battery grip, of course, as you can see a trend here, but it does have, he does have the attachment so you don't have to use the grip uh, for that handle, so you can give it a little bit lower profile. Very capable camera, a lot of settings, a lot of features, a lot of capabilities. Very fast firing speed, I'm sure, with this just beast here. Oh, golly, look at that, it's just, it's massive. Okay, this would be very interesting to shoot. I might have to just put a roll of film in there and fire it all at once with the shutter speed I can get on that. So you can start to see a little bit of a trend. It's a lot of stuff that's, you know, bigger, heavier, a lot of 35 mil, uh, a lot of stuff with battery grips, stuff that, you know, takes up more space and is harder to transport. So let's continue on here. I believe that's it for the Canon line. No, not quite. We have two more Canons over here. We have the Canon FTB uh, right here. Great mechanical Canon film camera. Um, very simple, straightforward, kind of like a Minolta SRT or a Pentax Spotmatic, kind of like that. Even, you know, the Nikon F and F2 is very simple, straightforward to the point, no removable prism. But what's great about these cameras, uh, this is, is this how filming it? No, no film on this one. There's film on like four of these, I have to check now. Uh, this has a 50 mil 1.4 lens on it as well. This is the Canon FT. What's nice about the FTs and the FTBs is that they are basically built on the Canon F1 body, also the Canon EF body. So I have the EF, which is one of my favorite, actually probably my favorite in the Canon lineup is my Canon EF. Uh, and then of course the F1, the old F1, somewhat the new F1, it has that same exact body. So it's built well, it's gonna last long. That body is probably, you know, the best built body in the Canon lineup. Only difference really is that you don't have as many settings. I don't think you have, you know, exposure compensation or anything like that. The EF has shutter speeds down to 30 seconds. You know, the, the Canon F has a removable prism, uh, just little features like that. But as far as the actual body and internal mechanics, it's pretty much the same all around. So those are great, very underrated and still relatively inexpensive bodies, if I remember correctly. 
So if you're okay with shooting mechanical and you know not having all the bells and whistles and kind of getting your settings with an external meter or something like that, those are great cameras and they will serve you very well. Next up, uh, let's see, cover those, cover those, cover those. Rangefinder. We got a few rangefinders up here. First, the Konica Auto S2. Had one of these, I sold it. Occasionally, I regret it, but I need to consolidate, so it's, I'm glad I got rid of it. You know, these are just great little rangefinders. They're not as well built as most. The Konica Auto S3 improved vastly upon some of the faults of this camera. It goes for two to three hundred dollars. The Auto S2 you can get for anywhere from forty to sixty bucks. It's a great camera. It's got a nice 45 1.8 mil lens. Build quality wise, not the best, but if you get one that's working and you take care of it, you should be okay. It's got a leaf shutter. The viewfinder is gigantic. It's very easy to compose your shots and nail your focus with that viewfinder. It's a little bit bigger, you know, not as many bells and whistles. Changing your shutter speed and aperture isn't as easy as some other cameras just because it's hard to differentiate between the two dials. But still, the images you get off this are just great with that lens. <sighs> Key. This is the Keeve 4 with a 35mm 2.8 lens, almost like a Nikon pancake lens you got on there. Rather interesting. Don't know much about that lens, but I will try and research it. So the Keeve line is basically a contacts copy up until I think it's the Keeve 4, which is this. This is the Keeve 4. After the Keeve 4, production switched and the quality kind of dropped off. But up to the Keeve 4, it's all the same parts and mechanics as contacts cameras. Um, just branded with key. Again, I believe it is a key for. So you're getting a contacts body just branded as a key. So these are great cameras, great alternatives to the more expensive contacts line, basically identical glass wise. Not sure of all the differentials there, but those are great. I actually just picked up a contacts three at a really good price. I'm excited to use that one as well. But yeah, key is another one that I've always wanted to shoot. Sticking with the USSR European theme, we have the Zorki 4. Uh, the Zorki 4, I believe this is an M39 mount, not an M42. Another rangefinder. I've had several of you guys tell me I need to try this out when talking about budget rangefinders or just budget cameras in general. So uh, I might try and shoot this before it gets shipped out somewhere. Viewfinder doesn't look bad. Uh, these are kind of cool. I, I, I have mixed feelings about the wine, you know, compared to an actual lever. Mixed feelings about that. All right, I've completely lost track of where I am. Ah, the Rolleiflex SL35. Don't know much about this um, SL35, but it has a Carl Zeiss 35 2.8 lens on it. Um, yeah, don't know much about this. I'm a big fan of the Rolleiflexes. You know, I love my 2.8 Rolly, but I don't know much about their SLR lineup. <clears throat> Never shot with one. Behind that, we have the Sears TLS with a 50mm 1.4 lens. Now, apparently this lens has a bit of a cult following. It's uh, rather popular, kind of an underrated, obviously because it's Sears branded. Uh, but this Auto Sears 55 1.4, don't know much about it, uh, but you made a big deal of it. There is a slight scratch on the interior element. He set it down on a counter or something and it put a little scratch in it. I doubt it will affect the image quality at all, but it means you're getting a better deal. And then lastly, there's two more before we move on to the medium format line. First off, the Ashika Electra, another nice little rangefinder. This is the Ashika Electra 35. I had one of these, I sold it, and it's just a classic camera. What's great about this is that shutter. It's just, you can barely hear it. Perfect street photography camera. You just can't hear that shutter at all. I don't like that the film advance makes a lot of noise but the shutter is almost dead silent. And the all black, love the all black because the shutter speed is automatic. You get to pick your aperture and your ISO, uh, but shutter speed camera does that. Lastly, the Olympus OM-1 and OM-2. I have right here, the Olympus OM-2 with the motor drive on it. And then I have two Olympus OM-1s and an additional motor drive. Olympus glass is great. I have never shot with Olympus. I have an OMG and an OM-10 that I've needed to repair for a while and shoot. Uh, they just kind of fall into the back burner. Uh, but now that I have someone else's OM2 and OM1, I'm gonna have to test these out because I know the Olympus line is great. Now, medium format stuff. First off, TLR wise, we have the Yashica LM. 
Now I know everybody loves and raves over the Sheikah Mat 124G, which yeah, it's cool. I think the big difference that kind of separates that is it's got a little bit better build quality. Um, glass wise, I think it's gonna be the same throughout the Sheikah TLR lineup. Sheikah LM, I've shot the Sheikah G, I believe. Uh, they're great. They're nice little TLR cameras. They just don't have the cult following that, you know, the Rolly Flex lineup does. Next up, we have the Minolta Autocord CDS2, I think. Uh, again, Minolta, I love Minolta glass. I've always wanted to shoot a Minolta TLR, never have. They're not obviously as common as the Rolly Flex and Rolly Cord lineup. So that's the CDS2, I think. And then a little less, lesser known, very popular, and kind of rivals a lot of Rolly Flex stuff, really. A great alternative uh, that not as many people know about compared to the Sheikah Mat 124G or the Rolly Flex is the Minolta Autocord CDS3. Personally, I have never shot on them, but I know they can be rather popular. Uh, but yes, the Minolta Autocord CDS3. Next up, the Hasselblad 553ELX. I have never shot Hasselblad because I've never had the money to pay for Hasselblad. This is the CDS3, and I won't be shooting this either because it does not come with a lens. But for you Hasselblad fans out there, this is of course fully functioning. It's, I mean, it looks like it's in like mint condition. There's a little, you know, scratching on the um, battery coin insert, which, you know, of course there's gonna be. But other than that, I mean, there's hardly a scratch on it. It just, it's in fantastic shape. Works perfectly fine, works great. Um, yeah, so the Hasselblad. 553 ELX. I've shot a Polaroid on a Hasselblad once. And that was about it. Moving along, we have two, yes, I said two, Lumia 645 Pro cameras. Pro, yeah, 645 Pro. This one has the 80 mil 2.8. Comes with, of course, the electronic grip, film backing. Uh, comes with the eye level viewfinder. But this is a great 645 camera. 645, of course, is the kind of smallest in the medium format realm you can get and just above 35 mil so you get more shots and you still get a very large negative compared to 35 mil which is why 645 has become pretty popular lately since you know film isn't getting any cheaper let's be honest the other 645 we have here has the waist level viewfinder and this has the 105 the 150 mil 3.5 lens on here there is also another wide angle lens in the box. I just haven't gotten around to taking those out, taking pictures and all that stuff. So yeah, if you're looking for a 645, I have options because there's also the Pentax 645 camera. This has the 75 mil 2.8 lens. So the Pentax 645, similar to the Mamiya 645. I do really like Pentax, um, but yeah, the Pentax uh, 645 camera, very different look compared to the Mamiya but another 645 option. And last but certainly not least, we have the Keeve 60. Uh, this is an interesting camera. Another one from the USSR. This is very similar to a Pentax 67. It has a removable prism, interchangeable lenses. It's a massive monstrosity SLR. Uh, and it, even more interesting is the lens on this guy. So this is a 35 mil 3.5 lens. Correction, so this is the RSAT 30mm 3.5 lens. Uh, it is a super wide angle lens. I think that comes out to like a 12mm, 14mm lens, um, which for medium format is really funky. So I'm very curious to shoot this camera with this lens. Uh, again, fully functional. These, I can't believe the price on these. I was looking at these years ago. They were 40 to 60 bucks for these cameras. Now I looked the other day, it looked like 300 bucks. So I guess people are seeing that as a Pentax 67 alternative. For sure, I've shot one before. I believe I shot that with the 85 mil lens, which is like a 50 equivalent. And the image looked great. Um, very cool looking. Uh, I was surprised at how well it looks, but I feel like that's kind of how it is with anything from the USSR. The images in the glass, they, they look great. It's just the build quality of the cameras that is always kind of in question. Yeah, there is a Konica Auto Reflex T4 here as well with a 50mm 1.7. Konica glass is great. It's Minolta glass. Minolta glass is great. And the Konica line, I think, is extremely underrated, underappreciated. So if you find a good deal on a working Konica Auto Reflex T4 or any of the Auto Reflex line, uh, snag it. Uh, as long as it's working, they're great cameras. The glass is great. It's going to get you comparable results, um, if not as good 
as a lot of what's already up here on the table. So don't overlook the Konica lineup. So that covers all the camera bodies. There's still lenses and stuff over there I haven't even gotten into that I have to take pictures of and all that stuff. But so if you're looking for anything or interested in anything specific, be sure to shoot me a message. Now, as far as giveaways go, we have two. We have the Canon T50 winner and then the, the Fed 5B, I think it was the Fed 5B rangefinder as well. So for the Canon T50, we have Andrew Lara is the winner. Andrew Lara, his comment was his favorite film camera is the Polaroid SX70 Sonar. Solid, solid option. I think I've sold like three of those. I have two that I need to fix, a white one and a black one, but man, those are great. Uh, it was a revolutionary camera for its time in 1978 and still is to this day. It's true, still a classic, can't beat the SX70. So Andrew Lara, the Canon T50 uh, is yours. I just need you to shoot me a message on email or direct message, something like that on Instagram, and I can get you that. Uh, for the Fed, yeah, the Fed 5B little rangefinder, we have Micah Pepper. So Micah Pepper, his favorite film camera is the Olympus OM-1. Uh, his first and his only film camera is the Olympus OM-1. So that's a solid option for sure for your film camera. That's definitely a solid option, the OM-1. So Micah Pepper, the Fed 5B is yours. Again, I just need you to shoot me an email or send me a direct message. I will try and reach out to you. Uh, if you don't respond, then um, I'll have to figure something else out. So that covers it for someone else's film camera collection that I am helping him sell. And I almost forgot to tell you which cameras he has decided to keep. So the cameras that Jude has decided to keep are the Leica R4 with the lenses, the Konica 3M. I have the Konica 3A, great rangefinder camera. It's Hasselblad with lenses, of course. So he has a different Hasselblad. I don't think he has 553 ELX. I could be wrong. Maybe he has another one. Uh, the Bronica SQ, which is a 645 camera. The Mamiya 645 1000S, which is also a 645 camera. The new Canon F1. So he has another one just like this. Uh, the Super Dolly medium format pocket camera. The Topcon Super D. Topcon. Great cameras and glass to go with those. Uh, and the Olympus OM4. So he's selling the OM2s and the OM1s, but he's gonna keep the OM4. I notice he's not keeping any Nikon stuff, which I find rather interesting. Also, he has another Leica. I think he has a Leica M4, I believe. Uh, then he's keeping a Contax 3A, which Contax again, and the Canon 7. Uh, he also still has to bring me a Nikon FG and a Konica Auto Reflex T. So that is gonna wrap up this video on selling someone else's camera collection. So yeah, if you have any questions about any of these or just questions in general on film or film cameras, be sure to leave it in the comments and I will be sure to respond. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button and I will see you next time.